tonight we're going to talk about blessings and curses. Whether we're blessed or we're cursed. You know, just because you're a believer doesn't mean you can't be cursed. Amen. Amen. So, I'm going to share a couple things beforehand that <clears throat> blessings and curses and, and it originated right from the beginning, right in, in, in Genesis when God cursed the serpent and, of course, the curse came, became, came on man and they got separated from God and they uh, lost that eternal realm that was supposed to have been here on earth and then man had to now learn his way instead of be taught his way and God was going to teach him but now man had to go the hard way and uh, do on the job draining because of the curse and it made man's life torment and rough uh, childbirth for a woman was going to be painful and Man would have to work and sweat. But the one thing that they did leave the garden with when God reestablished it through the blood of the killing of the animal was he, he restored some of the blessings as for to be fruitful and multiply because he was still going to fulfill his plan even though man was not cooperating. Amen? Now, blessing and cursing. Well, we know that the opposite of blessed is curse and the opposite of curse is blessed. Uh, a, a cursing and a blessing is a kind of like a response of judgment. And it's a response of judgment according to a, um, an act or a deed or um, something that's been spoken. In other words, uh, a judgment is always something that, that determines an outcome. And, in, and an outcome can either be a blessing or a curse. In fact, in decisions that you make are, are either leading to a curse or leading to a blessing. Amen? Everything is a representation. If it's not blessed, it's cursed. Does everybody get it? Um, it's also like a reflection of pleasing or displeasing God. A response of uh, pleasing or displeasing God. Um, and of course, in this, it's a reflection of pleasing or displeasing uh, an action that we have taken in relationship of an almighty God and Heavenly Father. Does everybody get that? Well, let me repeat that again. These are responses of judgment according to the, an act or deed or spoken word. It is the reflection of pleasing or displeasing God Almighty. It's His reaction. In other words, if we're displeasing to Him, a curse comes, doesn't it? If we're pleasing to Him, a blessing comes. In fact, when we're displeasing to him, he, the blessings begin to stop. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not going to go out and labor and make money. But those are self-imposed blessings, not blessings from God. Does everybody get it? In other words, now you're laboring for you and not for God. And it's different. Because the Bible says that it rains on the, well, on the wicked and the righteous. Amen. So did you ever notice that even wealthy people who are wicked, you say, man, how come God's blessed them? He didn't. God's not blessing them. They're blessing themselves. Does everybody get it? That All that stuff is not according or sightful of God. You know, there are many people who serve the devil and have, are very wealthy. But that doesn't mean that's God's blessing on them. No. Because God's blessing comes with him personally, his favor. His favor. You know, man works to please himself. There is a fulfillment of bringing home money. There is a fulfillment of material things. That fulfillment is not from God. Because the fulfillment that you and I get is knowing that we're pleasing him. Amen. That's the fulfillment we get. Knowing that we're doing the right thing before him and pleasing Him. And then He blesses us. And He blesses us by with things that we don't even do because He does exceedingly abundantly far above all we could ever ask or think. All of a sudden, a blessing will come from somewhere that you didn't even, wow. And you know it's your Father because it's something you thought and came to pass. Now, I'm not saying He doesn't, he's, he doesn't send you out to go do something, yes. But the opposite of blessing is curse. So remember something. It is a, it is a judgment or a determination of something that has been acted upon or spoken upon. 
that results in a consequence of either a blessing or a curse. Amen? So no matter what you do, can either lead to a blessing or a curse. Now, we know that Adam and Eve were cursed, but they still labored, didn't they? They still ate. God still made way that they still ate and so forth. The one thing that they lost the blessing of was a personal relationship with him. That is the greatest blessing that you and I could have is that personal relationship with him. That is a blessing. And you know, when you know the blesser, and you have that relationship with the blesser, you get blessed. Many people go astray by the blessing. All of a sudden, God blesses them with something, and they begin to worship the, the material instead of the one who blessed them. Amen? So what we want to do is we want to stay in that realm, in that arena, where we are pleasing to God. Not that we're looking for the blessing. We're looking for the response to know that we're pleasing Him. Amen? And not that you're going to be rewarded in every single thing you do. And you shouldn't expect a reward in every single thing you do. Amen? What we do is we do things because we love Him, not because we have to. And that's the difference between religion and relationship. Amen? So turn to Mark 1. And Mark 1 and verse 9. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of, of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And of course, we know Jesus was blessed. Amen. And this is the pleasing. You know, we want to know that we're pleasing God, you are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. Oh, praise God. There isn't a greater thing than to know that what you're doing is pleasing God. That is such peace and such a position just to know that what you're doing is pleasing Him. Amen? So that's where we want to be. We want to be in that place where we're pleasing Him. If we're in that place where we're pleasing Him, blessings will begin to flow. In Deuteronomy 28, let's read this together starting from verse 1. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Well, if you diligently obey his voice. A diligently. In verse 2, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Let me tell you something. You know, you might be able to obey the voice of the Lord God for two days. And next thing you know, you're going astray. That's why blessings don't overtake people. Well, I did what was right before God two days ago. I listened to him. I did it. He told me to go do this, and I did it. Well, what about today? Well, well, I just don't understand God. I've been asking him to do this for me. I've been asking him to do that for me. But you ain't been listening to what he's asking you to do. Not just for two days. It says diligently. These blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord, your God. Because you obey the voice of the Lord. Let me tell you something. The body of Christ should be a lot further than where it is. The problem is, is that contamination of cancer called worldliness has entered the body of Christ. That's why it's not where it's supposed to be. The body of Christ should be overtaken by blessing, but it's been sucked in worldliness. It's not where it's supposed to be. That's why what you saw happen in the United States happened, because God was bringing judgment to his church. Those towers came down, World Trade Center, the World Trade Center, where the money is, where their God is, where many believers God is, claim to be believers, but they still serve self and money. Their main thing is, is what they have. You know, when I was in the world and in the drug world, we used to compete with one another. Whoever had the most toys won. Vets, vans, Harleys, cars, houses, Whatever, whatever, okay, flights, vacations, gambling, how much money you could win, whatever. Didn't matter. Whoever had the most material things won. <laughs> Didn't realize none of us won. <laughs> we were all deceived. Praise be to God. In verse 3, it says, Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you 
Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The, listen to this. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated. Glory to God. If you diligently obey his voice. Before your face, it says it. <laughs> they shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. In verse 8, the Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if, everybody circle that if, you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods, and the fruit of your body, and the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, and the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not bow. Are we there yet? You know why? Not diligently obeying, obeying his voice. In verse 13, And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. Circle if. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Now that is powerful. That's a wonderful blessing. God wants us to have prosperity. You know that poverty is a curse? If we're impoverished, that's a curse. So we see that this blessing is powerful from God. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to multiply. He wants us to be fruitful. These are blessings from God. But we must diligently obey His voice. The wonderful thing is, is as a child of God, we can start over anytime. Amen. We can start over tonight. <laughs> we can start over tonight and diligently say, Lord, I want to hear and obey your voice and walk in your ways. Amen. We can do that right tonight. And things can change. Okay, let's go a little further. And let's go to verse 15 and talk about the curse. <laughs> I'm not going to go in depth because it's opposite of everything that we just said. Amen. In verse 15, let's read it together. But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Wow. And they will what? Overtake you. Go to verse 45. In verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue, overtake you, until you are destroyed, because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he has commanded you. And they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder and on your descendants forever. That says forever, man. Forever. Yes. Generational curses. Forever. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of everything. In other words, you weren't thankful for what God has given you. Therefore, you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and thirst and nakedness and in need of everything. And he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. That's heavy. Did you ever notice that when we turned away from God, the curse came upon us and we lost everything? Lost everything. Bam. When we went back to drugs or alcohol or the ways of the world, now, you may prosper for a period of time, but eventually you will lose everything. Something will happen. An accident, something will happen. 
you get arrested for drunken driving, you'll get arrested for drugs, something will happen where the fine will wipe you out because the curse of turning away. It always happens. Go to 63. Verse 63. And it shall be that just as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you to nothing. And you shall be plucked from off the land which you go to possess. Mm. <laughs> so God will even enjoy bringing you to nothing. It doesn't mean He doesn't love you. <coughs> he does love us. But he knows that this needs to come so that it gets our attention. Amen? Amen. So the opposite of blessed is what? Cursed. And the opposite of cursed is? Cursed. So now, that means that we're either going to obey his voice or disobey his voice. Amen? You know how many people get in so much trouble because the lust of the flesh, they want to do something. They want to do things, marriages, relationships jobs, uh, making decisions, all of these things. And they live in constant turmoil and trouble. Amen? You know why? Because they follow the dictates of their own heart and not God's heart. Okay, let's go a little further. Let's go to Galatians 6. Everybody all right? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb. Galatians chapter 6. And verse 7. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So even though that you might have sowed something and you ain't reaped it yet, you're gonna. You're gonna reap it. You cannot outrun that. You must reap it. Amen? Now listen. Let's go on to the next one. Verse 8. For he who sows to his flesh will the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now listen. So if you're sowing to the flesh, so what brings the curse? Sowing to the flesh. And what brings the blessing? Sowing to the Spirit. Does everybody get it? Okay. Now, verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So, in other words, that's a representation of a harvest, isn't it? Because when you got to sow, you plant something, and, and it's going to grow, and you're going to reap. The thing is, is as long as you continue to tend it and protect it, you're going to reap something good. But if you lose heart and go astray, you will lose that that blessing in the, of that harvest. Amen? Amen? You know how many people got pushed out of position just when the blessing of the harvest was about to hit? Amen. The devil pushed them right out. Amen. Just when that blessing of the harvest was about to hit. Just when, and now let me share something with you. It's not just about financial and material blessings. Like I share with you, the greatest blessing that you and I can have is God's Amen. presence. Amen. Amen. God's presence. Because in His presence you have everything. Everything. You won't be looking for material things. You'll be looking for Him. Because when He shows up, you got everything. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack or want. Amen? Now, so sowing and reaping brings a f the fruit of the sowing and reaping is known as the blessing or curse. That's the fruit of sowing and reaping. Now, it's a spiritual law, isn't it? Let's use an example. Let's go to Genesis 26. Oh, hallelujah. Genesis 26. In verse 1, we're going to read a lot of this chapter, but it's powerful. In verse 1, there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Amalek, king of the Philistines, and Gerah. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to the Egypt. Why? Because the famine came and he thought about going back to Egypt because the supplies were there. He said, live in the land of which I shall tell you. In other words, diligently obey my voice. Dwell in this land and I will be with you in what? Bless you. For to you and your descendants I 
give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. Now we know that the promises of Abraham, God said, I, I will bless you and you will be fruitful and multiply and your descendants will be, <laughs> it will be the world. <laughs> Verse 4, And I'll make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. In your seed, he says. We'll get to that. Because Abraham, what? Obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Wow. Did you ever notice that somebody who's been following God has a child? And the kid's blessed, but the kid is not doing the things right before God. And because the overflow, the blessing going down. But eventually... It's going to stop. Does everybody get it? It's going to stop eventually. Because he just told him, he said, listen, the blessing is going to come upon you from Abraham, Isaac, even though you're Abraham's son. But for to maintain this blessing, you still must obey my voice or they'll stop. Okay. In verse 6, so Isaac dwelt in Gerah. And the men of the place asked about his wife. And he said, she is my sister, for he was afraid to say she is my wife, because he thought, lest the men of the place kill me for Rebekah, because she is beautiful to behold. So he lied. Now it came to pass, when he had been there a long time, that Ambalek, um, king of the Philistines, looked through a window and saw, and there was Isaac showing endearment to Rebekah, his wife. And Ambalek called Isaac and said, Quite obviously, she is your wife. So how could you say she is my sister? Isaac said to him, Because I said lest I die on account of her. So did he make amends? Yes. He told the truth, didn't he? Okay. And Ambalak said, What is this you have done to us? One of the people might have lain with your wife and you would have brought guilt on us. So Ambalak charged all his people saying, he who touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. In what year? The year that he made amends. Everybody get it? The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks, possessions of herds, and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Do you think God wants that now for me and you? Yeah. Amen. Now the Philistines had stopped up all the wells which his father's servants had dug up in the days of Abraham, his father, and they had filled them with earth. So they stopped the water. Okay. And Amalek said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than us. Now he stopped the water. He was trying to move him away, wasn't he? Now let me share something with you. This is a part of the reaping. This is a part of the reaping. Now he's got trouble, doesn't he? Why? Because he lied. Now God still blessed him, didn't he? But he still had to reap something. Here's a part of the reaping. Understand, the reaping in your life and my life is what God uses to melt us, mold us, and use us. What you're going through right now is a part of the reaping. What you're going through today it's a part of the reaping you might have done days ago, a year ago, three days ago. Who knows? Even when you ask for forgiveness, there still is a reaping. The forgiveness keeps you from eternal damnation. It doesn't keep you from reaping. Does everybody get this? Okay. Hallelujah. Okay, now verse 17. Now you got to understand, now it brought jealousy on this king. He said, man, we got to get rid of these people. They're mightier than us. He's, look how much he's prospering. It brought fear on them. Amen. In verse 17, Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerah and dwelt there. And Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father had called them. Also Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. But the herdsmen of Gerah quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name 
of the well is sick because they quarreled with him. Then they dug another well and they quarreled over that one also. So they called it Sitnar. And he moved from there and dug another well. So you've got to understand, this is a part of the reaping. They dug a well, they found water, they had arguments. Okay, move on. Dug a well, found water. Okay, there was arguments. Moved on. This is a part of that reaping. And he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name Rehoboth, because he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Does everybody get it? So here was a part of that reaping and a part of that sowing. Amen? Now let's go a little further. Then he went up from there to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. Not for Isaac's sake, for Abraham's sake. <laughs> because Abraham was promised that his descendants would be blessed. The covenant was with Abraham, and it went down. The covenant was with Abraham. Um, but did you see that after he accepted the reaping and kept going on and did not fall or forsake God, God appeared to him and said, Okay, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to multiply you. Do you understand that? See, during your trial and tribulation, the devil's trying to push you out of position because God is about to, ready to bless you and multiply you every time. Why? Because he knows you've got to go through the reaping so he can teach you. So he built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord and he pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants dug a well. Then Amalek came to him from Gerah and uh, Hazoth, one of his friends, and Philco, the commander of his army. And Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me since you hate me and have sent me away from you? But they said, We have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. So we said, Let there now be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you. Ooh. Let's make amends. That you will, not, will do us no harm since we have not touched you and since we have done nothing to you but good and have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed of the Lord. The heathens recognized God was with them. So he made them a feast and they ate and drank. Amen? Amen. What did he say? You are now the blessed of the Lord. Even the heathen acknowledged the blessing of the Lord. Amen? Amen. All to God be the glory. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy 29. Do, do, Deuteronomy. Is everybody all right? Want to be blessed? Then diligently obey His voice. Deuteronomy 29. In verse 9. Hallelujah. Therefore, keep the words of this covenant. Ah, oh, we talked about that covenant, didn't we? And do them that you may prosper in all that you do. So you must be a covenant keeper to maintain the blessing. Does everybody get it? They work hand in hand. All of you stand today. All of you stand today before the Lord your God, your leaders and your tribes and your elders and your officers and all the men of Israel, your little ones and your wives, also the stranger who is in your camp, from the one who cuts your wood to the one who draws your water, that you may enter into covenant with the Lord your God and into his oath, which the Lord your God makes with you today that he may establish you today as a people for himself, and that he may be God to you, just as he has spoken to you, and just as he has sworn to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I make this covenant and this oath 
not with you alone, but with him who stands here with us today before the Lord our God, as well as with him who is not here with us today. For you know that we dwelt in the land of Egypt and that we came to the nations which you passed by. And you saw their abominations and their idols which were among them, wood and stone and silver and gold, so that there, that they, that there may not be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away from away today from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations, and that there may not be among you a root bearing bitterness or wormwood. And that's what God is trying to prevent in this country right now. Because, see, the devil would like to steal your blessings. And so it may not happen when he hears the words of this curse that he blesses himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace even though I follow the dictates of my heart. Whoa, he blesses himself. Remember, we talked about that. I follow the dictates of my as though the drunkard could be included with the sober. The Lord would not spare him, for then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy would burn against that man, and every curse that is written in this book would settle on him, and the Lord would blot out his name from under heaven. And the Lord would separate him from all the tribes of Israel for adversity according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in the book of the law, so that the coming generation of your children who rise up after you and the foreigner who comes from a far land would say, when they see the plagues of that land and the sicknesses which the Lord has laid on it, the whole land is brimstone, salt, and burning. It is not sown, sw not sown nor does it bear, nor does any, any grass grow there like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Amaz, Zibrim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and his wrath. Amen? So understand that um, obeying maintains covenant. Amen? Obeying maintains covenant and brings blessings in favor of God. Now, remember I share with you, not prospering is a curse. Why? Because we're following the dictates of our own heart. Even though we're blessing ourselves, eventually we are going to come to the end of all of that and come to nothing. Go to uh, Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 28. In verse 20. Let's read this together. In verse 20, let's read it together. A faithful man will abound with blessings. Now let me share something with you about someone who's faithful. Someone who completes what he started. It's faithful. Faithful. God tests us. If you've started something and not completed it, you're not faithful. Amen? A faithful man will abound with blessing, but he who hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. Ooh. In other words, you're not to chase money. Let me tell you something. There will come a point in time as you maintain covenant and you heed the voice of the Lord, money will follow you. You won't chase money. Money will follow you. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, cursed. Well, you know, the, the Bible tells us about many things that are cursed. First of all, it talks about fornication is a curse. You bring a curse. It talks about man sleeping with man, woman sleeping with man. Those are cursed. Those that are bound by homosexuality and, and lesbianism or whatever, 
sleeping with animals. They're cursed. They're going to church thinking that they're blessed because they're blessing themselves. They're cursed because they're still doing the same thing. They're headed on their way to hell unless they stop. Does everybody get it? It's important. You know, because, I mean, many of them, I mean, there's organizations and groups, they got pastors and preachers, now they're, they're homosexuals. They're cursed. They're under the curse. They're actually under the law because they've trampled the grace of God. And they can't walk the law because no one can. So they're cursed. Amen? Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> go to Psalm 68. Hallelujah. Psalm 68. <clears throat> and uh, verse 19. Let's read this together. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits or blessings. The God of our salvation. I mean, daily He's loading us with blessings. Something's happening every day in your life of a blessing. Something. You learn something. Something spiritually. Something. Every single day in your life, there's something going on. You might not even see it. You, it might blow right by you, but it's happening. In other words, you didn't comprehend it, but it happened. Something is happening in your life today. As long as you're a covenant-keeping child, God is moving on your behalf. He's making arrangements. He's preparing. Something is going on. Amen? And he loads us up daily. Go to Proverbs 10 in verse 22. Let's read it together. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. So when you're rich with the blessing of the Lord, you don't have no sorrow. Do you ever notice how many wealthy individuals have much sorrow? Because no matter how much money they make, it doesn't give them happiness. They keep trying to buy happiness, and it just don't come. They're, and then you know what their sorrow is? Trying to maintain everything they bought. <laughs> That's their sorrow. <laughs> oh man now I gotta maintain this oh no I gotta maintain oh you know what now they're trying to maintain the things to keep happy but the Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it there is no sorrow with being rich when it's coming from God amen oh hallelujah go to verse 6 go back to verse 6 Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. So that means that you and I got to be righteous. We must walk upright before God. We must be covenant-keeping children to receive the fullness of the blessings of God. Why don't we go to uh, Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. In verse 32. Oh, the Proverbs are good. Proverbs 8, verse 32. Let's read this together through 36. Glory to God. Now, therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. Whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. 
But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Ooh. That's quite explanatory. So that means that we must walk upright. In other words, we must walk perfect. Now, you may say, I can't walk perfect. You're right. But I'm going to tell you what brings you into perfection. The blood of Jesus. Does everybody get it? The Bible says uh, we're all sinners. Right? He says if, if, if you don't believe that you sin, then you're a liar. Mm -hmm. But it's the blood of Jesus that bring, keeps us upright and walks us in perfection. It's His righteousness, not ours. That's why someone who's faithful has a maintains a relationship. He completes what he started. He maintains that relationship and fellowship in the Spirit with the Lord. Go to uh, Galatians 3. Um, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 7. Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, And you all nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Why? Because they're trying to do it in their own strength. It says, Curse is a man who trusts in man. They're trying to justify themselves of being upright by their own doings. That's why it's important for repentance to be done every day, two and three times a day. And when you blow it, you repent because it's the blood of Jesus that keeps you sanctified. Amen? <laughs> for it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. So actually, no one can obey the law. No one could obey the Ten Commandments. It was impossible. That's why they had to have animal sacrifices for the sins. That's why you and I if we justify ourselves by obeying the law, well, I don't use anymore. I don't do this anymore. I don't do that anymore. I must be right with God. No, now you're doing it in your own works. Now you're justifying by your walk instead of justifying by the blood in faith. In other words, you are a sinner. We're all sinners. We sin every single day. That's why it's important to maintain relationship because that relationship maintains covenant through the blood of Jesus. And that maintains the blessings in favor of God because none of us can walk upright in our own strength. Only in Christ. That's why those who are in Christ are a new creation. How are they a new creation? Through the blood and empowered by the Spirit. Why? The Spirit really... You know what? Let me share something with you. The Spirit gives us power, doesn't it? The Holy Spirit. You know what the main thing the Holy Spirit gives us power for? Relationship. Amen. It gives us power to have relationship with God. That's the number one thing He gives us power for. Why? Because if you have a relationship with God, you have a witness of who He is. And the favor and the blessings of the Lord will come upon you. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go on. In verse 12, Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What is the curse? Death, hell, and the grave. Why? Because no one could walk upright by obeying the law. None of us could obey the law. So Christ redeemed us from that curse. Heaven become a curse for us, for it is written, Curses everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. We're Gentiles. 
in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Now to Abraham and his seed. You notice that's capital? You know who's Abraham's seed? Christ. Amen. Where the promises where the promises made, he does not say, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and your seed who is Christ. Wow. Wow. Glory to God. <laughs> So we see that the, the seed is Christ. Now let me share something with you also. We have a seed of faith, don't we? How did you receive salvation? Faith. Well, he who believes in Christ and walks, in other words, if you believe him, you follow him, right? And if you follow him and you have fellowship with him, you are repentant. And the blood of Jesus is covering the sins and allowing the covenant to be manifest, receiving the blessings in favor of God, and releasing you from the curse of the law. You know how many people fall and go back to the curse? Many. There are organizations right now that bring people under the curse. They've gone back to the law. You know what they'll tell you? If you don't obey the Sabbath, on a certain day, you're cursed. Well, that's ridiculous. We know the Lord of the Sabbath. Your Sabbath is every day. Amen. It means resting and trusting in God. Amen. So it's not just a specific day. They call Sunday the Lord's Day because everybody gets together and acknowledge God. But your Sabbath is every single day. So there are organizations that will say, listen, if you do not obey the Sabbath day, what are they doing? They've gone under the law. Now they must fulfill every law. And they can't. Does everybody get it? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's go on a little further. <laughs> now let me share this with you before we go. So what gets reestablished to me and you through the blood and confession, keeps us upright. It removes the curse of poverty. It, re it removes the curse of health, sickness and disease on us. It removes all those curses, doesn't it? It restores these things to where we are healthy. Amen. It restores these things where we are wealthy. It restores these things where we have relationship, doesn't it? It removes the curse of poverty and allows us to have relationship in the Spirit. To God be the glory. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go to Ephesians 1. Hallelujah. Is everybody there in verse 3? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Well, now it's reestablished every blessing in heavenly places. Amen? You are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. That means it's unlimited. You know why we don't get them? Because we don't believe it. <laughs> you know why we won't get them? Because we're not diligently heeding the voice of the Lord. But it says that we are blessed. That's been reestablished. We have been removed from the curse of poverty, from unhealthiness, from all of that garbage, and reestablished in every blessing that is available to me and you. Amen. Glory to God. Turn to uh, Hebrews 12. Glory to God. All the 
blood of Jesus. Hebrews 12 and verse 14. <clears throat> Hebrews 12, verse 14. Is everybody here? Let's read this together. Uh, 14 through 17. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Whoa. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright, for you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he had found no place for repentance, though he had sought it diligently with tears. In other words, Esau sold, sold his birthright for food. When he sold his birthright, he also gave up his blessing. There was no way he could receive the blessing if he sold his birthright. And he didn't repent of selling his birthright so he couldn't receive his blessing. Does everybody get it? He never came to repentance of selling his birthright so he could not receive the blessing. And God moved him out of the way. Now, we see here that any root of bitterness, and that's what God is trying to prevent right now in this country because of the disasters, isn't it? Why? Because the devil would love to disqualify the body of Christ from receiving the blessing of the Lord by getting root of bitterness. I can't tell you how many people have come across my path in this last week where healings have been manifested. I'm telling you. Where people have done people wrong in any way whatsoever. And healings have manifested. Because God wants to pour out his blessing. He is preparing his body to be the head and not the tail. Yeah. There's going to be such a pouring out of the Spirit of God in this next year. Yeah. It is going to be powerful. It's going to be powerful. Absolutely powerful. The body of Christ is going to arise in this country in such a great way that there will be a jealousy and envy be brought against the body of Christ that many will come to the Lord they'll say I don't understand but I want what you have Amen. I want, how come everything you touch turns to gold <laughs> But we must be diligent to obey the voice of the Lord and keep a humble heart and a repentant heart. Amen. It's happening. God is removing all bitterness from the body of Christ right now. Amen. All bitterness. Anyone that has offended you in any way, I'm telling you, God will bring it across your path. And you don't have to say sorry. or You just receive in love and forgive and forget. Praise. It's happening. Glory, hallelujah. Okay. Let's go on a little further. So remember, the devil wants to disqualify you for the blessing. He wants to disqualify us or deactivate us. Does everybody get it? He wants to deactivate us from the blessing of God. He wants to deactivate us from the flow of the Spirit of God. Not only in blessing and prosperity, but of laying hands on the sick, raising people from the dead, whatever it takes, casting out devils, taking dominion and authority with boldness, and signs and wonders following you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Go to 2 Corinthians 9.
2 Corinthians chapter 9. In verse 10. Let's read this together. 10 and 11. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower. Now wait a minute. God supplied the seed for me and you, Jesus. Now there's another seed called faith. Because you can't do anything without faith. Amen. See, you can have all these promises and all these blessings available to you. But they're not activated without faith. Does everybody get it? Everything is available for me and you. Well, then why don't people get healed? Why don't um, people prosper? Why? Because they're not acting in faith. Amen? Let's go a little further. Um, hallelujah. Let's start over. Now, may who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Well, he's not talking about food, is he? He's talking about righteousness. <laughs> That's spiritual seed sowing. Not physical. Because you can't get righteousness by physical seed sowing. You get righteousness by spiritual seed sowing. While you are enriched in everything for all liberty, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Wow. Let's go to uh, Romans 12. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Romans 12. Let's read verse 3 together. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. That measure of faith is that seed of faith. Every, in other words, everyone has been delivered a measure of faith. Everyone. God has given us enough faith to get saved. God has given us enough faith for the blessings. There is a seed of faith. How do you sow that seed of faith? By acting on it. Does everybody get it? That's what activates the seed, is by moving on it, receiving it, confessing it, thanking the Lord for it. Does everybody get it? How do you get healed and blessed? How do those blessings come? How does the healing come? Not by not doing anything, but by calling it in because it's yours. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. A measure of faith to receive the blessing and harvest. Malachi 3. We've been talking about blessing a lot. We need to, you know, just share a couple things about how we want to maintain that blessing and not get sucked into a curse. Oh, yeah, the Lord's been blessing me greatly. Whoa, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I got all of this stuff. Time to tithe? Wait a minute, tithe. What do you mean, tithe? God's blessing me. I don't need to tithe. If God wanted me to tithe, He wouldn't be blessing me. Ooh, we. No, man, you're blessing yourself and following the dictates of your own heart, and you're actually cursed. In Malachi 3, <laughs> in verse 8, is everybody there? Let's read it together. Will a man rob God? 
yet you have robbed me, but you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offering, you are cursed with a curse. Wow. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Hmm. You know how many people go astray? He says tithes and offerings, not, this ch not just tithe. You won't survive on just tithe. You have to do tithes and offerings. And you know what he'll do? He'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. In other words, he'll protect your money from being stolen. So that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fall to bear or fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed. And you will be a, a delightful land, says the Lord. Hallelujah. You want to be blessed by all nations? Praise be to God. Do you know that some people are still reaping the curse of not tithing? Hallelujah. <laughs> Acts 20. Yeah, well, I missed tithe about three weeks in a row, but, you know, I really had to do whatever. Well, thank God for the blood of Jesus. You can ask forgiveness, get from underneath the curse, and get back in the blessing, but you're going to reap. You're going to reap. Acts 20 and verse 35. Praise be to God. <clears throat> can we all read this together? I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Oh man, that's a word, word from daddy, man. 2 Corinthians 8. Second Corinthians chapter 8. You know, even when people, the Bible tells us, uh, cursed are those who are, who don't uh, respect their mother and father. Cursed are them. So there are many ways that you can be cursed. You know, honor your elders, respect authority, and all these other things. You know, cursed. We don't want to bring a curse upon us. Amen. You know, when you make an oath and you break that oath, you become cursed. How many times have you said to somebody, I'm going to do something and didn't do it? It's called a self-imposed curse. You become cursed. You repent. You're removed from that curse, but you're going to reap what you sowed. Every time. That's why the Lord said, that's why the Word tells us, don't tell somebody you're going to do something. Tell them if the Lord wills. That's why you're to make your yeses yes and your noes noes. Anything from that, beyond that is from the devil. You end up lying. Self-imposed curse. Well, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you don't. It's a self-imposed curse. That's why you need to repent quickly, get from underneath that curse, but you'll reap. But see, the longer you wait, the more the reaping for it. Yeah. The quicker you repent, the shorter the reap. Depending how long it's been, is the more reap. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 8, in verse 9. Is everybody there? Let's read this together. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, 
that you through his poverty might become rich. You know why? Because he carried that curse for me and you. So we are loose from the curse of poverty. We should not be in poverty. Verse 10. And in this I give advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must complete doing of it that as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also may be a completion out of what you have. In other words, if you don't complete what you started, a curse falls. Does everybody get it? Why? Because you made an oath. You know how many leave the discipleship house? Every one falls. Everyone falls under the curse mm -hmm. until they get back and make things right. Mm -hmm. Or whatever, they repent for it before God. They repent. But they're still going to reap what they sowed because they haven't completed anything. It's so important for us to complete what we start. Amen? Yes. All praise be to God. Hang in there. A few more verses. Psalm 1. Praise be to God. <laughs> Psalm 1. Glory to God. In verse 1 through 3, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Wow. That means, Cursed is the man who walks in the counsel of the ungodly. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. In other words, he's obedient. He is listening to the voice of God and willing to obey what he says. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. In other words, you're going to reap a harvest. Whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall what? Prosper. Amen. Prosper. Praise be to God. Oh, hallelujah. Remember, Jesus said this. That's why it's so important. That's why we give out deliverance prayers. Why? Because faith is what activates, doesn't it? In other words, you can read the Word of God and never use it. But until you start speaking it, because confession brings possession. Amen. Amen? Amen? So, that's why it's so important to repent. Why? It activates the blood. Now, Jesus said, I didn't come into the world to bring you peace. I came to bring you a sword. Amen. That sword is what you're to speak out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? So when you blow, you repent. That's why people read those deliverance prayers and break ancestral curses upon. Why? Because by faith they're being freed. Amen. Jesus says, I am the door. So you're coming in the door. And he's saying, now here, say this. Yeah. Say this. Why? So you can be freed from it. Because faith activates every promise of God. It doesn't come without faith. You must do something to get it. He paid the price for it to be available for me and you. Everything is available. The table has been set in the presence of your enemies. And every blessing is on there. Now you activate the blessing by faith. You call it in. Amen. You must hear. You activate the blessing by speaking it. Glory to God. Turn to Matthew 5. Oh, hallelujah. And the Bible says, He who humbles himself, God will exalt. In other words, God will exalt someone. Someone who's staying humble before God is going to be blessed in favor of God. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 3. 
Blessed are the poor in spirit. They're blessed. Why? They're humble. For theirs is the kingdom of God. You see that there's a reward for that, isn't there? Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be what? Comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. In other words, there's a reward for that. Blessing always brings a reward. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. What a relationship. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now, our rewards are in heaven, but we have rewards right here on earth. Does everybody understand that? I want to finish off with 2 Peter 1. So the devil would like to disqualify you by not having a pure heart. He wants to deactivate you from the blessing of God. 2 Peter chapter 1. So we have to look at what is blessing and cursing. Are we blessed or are we cursed? Are we bringing a curse upon us? Or are we allowing the blessing to flow? Remember, every decision and everything you do is a result to it. It will either end up in a blessing or a curse. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Let's read this together through verse 11. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As His divine power has given to us all things. Say all things. All things. All things. All things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. Now that is powerful. That is powerful. In other words, exceedingly great and precious promises. Those are blessings from God. But the one thing we must do is escape the lusts of this world to receive them. Verse 5, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and a lecture sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Praise be. You'll never stumble. You'll never go back again. You'll never fall in those things again. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. So search your hearts. Whatever it may be, Whatever it may be, make reconciliation with God. And let not bitterness, not, don't let any of these self-imposed curses come upon you. Break them off of your life. That's why we have those de deliverance prayers. That's why God has come up with prayers for His people to break off their life so that they can be freed for them. Amen? Amen. Ungodly soul ties brings a curse. You know that when fornicators come together, all the curses that are on the individual that they fornicated with are on them. Wow. 
people we used to do crimes with. It's called a soul tie. Those are curses brought down. That's why it's important to break these soul ties from our life. Amen? Father, we thank you. And Lord, we break these self-imposed curses off of our life. We repent for every avenue in our life, every sin that we've done that has brought a curse upon us, Lord. And we ask and we call forth by faith for the blessings and favor of you to come forth for us, Father, according to your word, because we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Lord, we call forth the blessing of Abraham to come forth because we are the offspring of the seed of the blessing. And we are, have a guarantee of the inheritance by the seal of the Holy Spirit upon us. Now, Lord, wash us with the blood and cleanse us that the blessings and the flow of your Spirit will come forth to bring glory to your name, expand your kingdom, and bring a sign and wonder to the world and to the lost. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.